going to talk about what it happens when we warp our prints on a 3D printer. Here's a little example of uh, what all of us may have seen and come up against when we've been 3D printing. So things start off looking great. And then we go get a cup of coffee, try to print overnight. This is speeded up, of course. And uh, things still. Oh, oh, oh no. Ah, uh, dang, Nabbit, what happened here? Everything looked great. Why is this doing this? It's got to be something wrong with the system or the filament. God, what could it be? Well, let's find out. So what can we do to keep our prints from warping? Well, let's start off with a few tips. Um, first of all, we got to make sure that our platform is nice and clean. So we're using BuildTac on our platform here. I'm using some isopropyl alcohol to uh, break down. It's a light solvent to break down some oils, whatever residues uh, might be on the build surface here so that we get a good grip when we're printing. So use a clean paper towel. Make sure there's nothing else sticking on our on our platform. Now that our platform is all clean and we're putting it back into position on the on the heater, uh, a couple things we have to keep in mind when we're putting it on, there's screw heads that we're sliding it in on. We want to make sure that they're underneath those screw heads. Uh, as you can see here, we're actually popped up over that. And that'll happen, especially if the platform is warm. It'll have a little bit of a bow to it. So make sure that you're checking the corners, including the back corners, to make sure that they are underneath the screw heads. Otherwise, our whole platform level calibration will be off. Air is something else we should consider for warping issues. Uh, ABS likes to contract when it cools, um, and PLA needs to be cooled to stay uh, uh, cohesive. Um, what we uh, want to do here is probably have the air directed away from the model by opening the gate um, when we're printing with ABS. Now that we have our platform reinstalled, all clean and ready to go, we're going to go into Calibrate and uh, reset our values here to make sure that we are platform level. Um, so the first thing is I'm going to take a look at my values and see which is the high spot and low spot. And I notice that the left hand corner is 0.3 and the back right hand corner is 0.7. Uh, so I'm going to make a note of that and start off in that front left hand corner. Um, I have hit reset which resets all the values. Uh, I'm going to click confirm and uh, go back into Calibrate and see that all the nine points are showing up as zeros. Um, I still have my manual or my uh, nozzle height level and I'm going to use that as a frame of reference um, and uh, move the platform up to uh, an area just below that target um, so probably like 206 uh, and and then if I hit the values at any of these numbers, like number seven here, I'm going to hit this value. It's actually going to drive the the uh, extruder uh, to that upper left hand position. Um, so it'll show you here in a second that uh, we're going to be uh, uh, at that uh, at that level. Um, so again, this is where my high point was on the platform. So it's my pr my frame of reference. I'm going to move up other corners to try and match this uh, level. So as I'm here, I'm going to hit the uh, plus signs uh, up on the values here to drive up the platform to the nozzle so that the card starts to touch and has enough resistance there that it almost feels like it's scraping the card as I pull it back and forth or that once the card is removed and I try to push it back under the, the nozzle that it uh, almost uh, feels like I'm pushing up the nozzle with the edge of the card um, but uh, without so much resistance that, uh, uh, that it's actually bending the card. Um, and uh, you can use a folded piece of paper, a business card, just because it has a little more rigidity. I would prefer that. And so right now I've moved the, the value and I'm, I've got good resistance here at uh, 207.00. 
Um, and so I'm going to make a note of that value. As I just confirm that that's resistance is what I'm looking for and it looks really good. So I'm going to copy this value of 207.00 and I'm going to use that again as my frame of reference for my other four corners. I want to try to get my, my other three corners. So I want to try to get them the same height as the front left hand corner that was the highest to begin with. So now I hit the value over by one and you can see it drives that uh, extruder back to that left hand corner and uh, uh, I can start to do the same thing here. So we will now move the uh, business card to that back left hand corner where we've driven the extruder back to and we will start to raise our platform manually to get uh, to the 207.00 setting that we're looking for. So I have the card there. Now I've what you can't see is my hand. My hand is just to the left hand side of this um, and uh, uh, once I have the nozzle set to 207.00 uh, on the software, I'm going to slide the card back and forth, and I see that I'm really loose. Um, it's uh, in my my platform needs to be driven up uh, to touch that. So what I'm doing with one hand is moving the card. The other hand is on the left hand side, and I'll show you this here in a minute. There's a there's a a nut, uh, a black um, knurled nut on the side of the corner, just to just below the platform service that as I'm turning it, I'm either pushing the platform up or pushing it down. Um, and uh, uh, as I am turning it, uh, um, it, it depends on the way you look at it, but keep rotating it until you get resistance. If you bottom out, just tr uh, s um, uh, to go the other way until you've moved the platform in the right direction to uh, get the resistance that we had before. Once you've got that resistance on the one corner, hit uh, the value on the number three uh, area and it'll drive the extruder over to that corner. Um, we will then move the business card uh, to that section, move it underneath there after we've lowered our platform to 206 as we did the move. And we bring it up to 207 and we see where we're at. If we're too loose, which we are, uh, then we are going to move, and this is where you'll be able to see those nuts. This is the one that's in the front. It's a flat black knurled nut, and there's the one in the back that I just touched. And uh, as I'm turning it, unfortunately I'm turning it in the wrong direction, which is just fine. It happens. Not a worry. Um, the way you'll be able to tell that is that uh, it's either going, it's, it's going to get just way loose, which it got for me. So uh, so now I am going to start turning it in the right direction. As you can see, I had to make up for all the turns that I did in the wrong direction. And, uh, but now I'm starting to get some resistance. And now I'm just going to just feather it uh, um, uh, and keep turning it until I get the right resistance that I had on those other two corners. And uh, the front corner, that, that back left corner, and uh, once I've gotten that resistance to match, as you can see, I'm turning it there. These are spring loaded corners. So there you can see the nozzle and the card very clearly, not so clearly, very clearly. Um, and let's see if we can show you the value of, the, of that resistance. Okay, now it's starting to bump a little bit, it's starting to feel a little better.
copying that value or moving it move the platform down a little bit moving it to the front corner that uh, now that I have that manual setting on the front or in the back right hand corner set the way I want it grab that business card again move it towards the front and this time I'll be able to show you a little bit better what we're doing um, so we can see there is a gap and I'm going to bring it back up to the 207.00 value again that's our constant at all the positions around so 207.00 and it's it's pretty darn close I could probably move it up just a little bit more just to get a little more of a bump of resistance And that's what I'm doing there. So now I'm turning it towards me as I'm up oh, there. You saw it's just a little bit of a bump there, a little bit of a stoppage before slipping under. That's the that's the feel you want to have right there okay so now I had all those value or I've, I've done that on all the settings uh, or the, the the hardware there on the corners now I'm gonna do an auto level because now I should be pretty close to actual level for hardware and now we're gonna do the fine-tuning uh, with the uh, auto level calibration and this is where we do the, the it'll do the nine points with the sensor. This is in this is not in real time. This has been speeded up a little bit, um, but it shows you where all those nine points are. And we'll see what our values look like coming back after this. Now, once this nine points is completed, the next thing is is it's going to go back and uh, do the nozzle height detection. Um, and we'll have it'll come back with a new nozzle height value because we manipulated the uh, platform pitch um, and hopefully we'll be within uh, a, a 0.3 to a 0.4 millimeter difference between uh, each uh, point on our system so remember we were uh, uh, we had a value that was as much as 0.78 um, uh, for the differential before and so now we have here we've got our our, our high point now is the back right hand corner 0 0.00 we have a 0.31 in the left hand corner and a 0.38 in the uh, uh, on the side so all in all not too bad I'm gonna go ahead and click confirm Preheating the platform is really important. Uh, here's a manual way to do it, and this is something I like to do just maybe before I get everything set up for my print job, is the middle button on the side. If you click it once, you'll see it turns the blue lights on, and it'll start preheating uh, the, your platform. Now we're ready to start printing. Um, I've as we see here, just double checking our work, we've done the calibration, we've got the nozzle height, all of that's already set, we feel confident. Um, as we go into maintenance here, this is where we can uh, preheat um, without having to touch the button on the side, so I can turn off the preheating, I can turn it on, we set the type of filament that we have, we can do extrude and withdraw, uh, and then as we go into print, um, this is where we can do layer thickness now so if we select a little bit thicker layer like a 0.3 it's going to do a couple things it's going to allow us to print faster but it's also because we're printing faster it reduces the the chance of of warping um, the other thing is too is a looser fill like we're going to select a 13 percent fill the, that's uh, going to increase speed it's going to reduce the amount of plastic that's also going to reduce the chance of warping you, the more you material you give um, the more chance you are going to have to warping um, we always want to print with a raft um, and so we will have that checked 
uh, that check mark off there because we are going to print with a raft. Um, there's been questions in regards to how do we make it so it preheats automatically the platform. This is where uh, in this expanded section of the print screen we can do the preheat. We can also select easy to peel which allows us to easily remove the raft once we're done. If we get confused on everything we just hit default and, uh, and then we can hit print. Now, when we're printing, we want to have the ABS, uh, uh, our platform, at at least 60 degrees before the print job starts going. Um, and, uh, and this will allow it to keep heating as we keep sending the job over. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Now we're uh, starting our print. And, uh, you know, by all of counts it kind of looks like how it started off at the beginning of the video um, but uh, time will tell and we're actually doing a speed uh, time lapse so so time time lapse will tell I guess in our case um, I'm gonna let this ride for a while and I'll catch up with you here at the end and see how we did Hey, look at this. Everything's looking really solid. I know we can't really see the backside, but believe me, it's nice and flat on our platform. So let's uh, let's get this bad boy pulled out. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so here's all the corners. You can see there's absolutely no lifting whatsoever. Um, we're going to let this thing cool off before we start to take it off the uh, platform. Let it cool because uh, this build tack, as it cools, it allows it to release uh, from, the, from the surface. Also, as we're taking it off the build tack, make sure that your scraper is nice and flat uh, uh, and not uh, at too steep of an angle. Um, the, you can actually reuse this build tack up to 100 times if you're careful. Um, also, um, do as um, do as you're told, not as you see. Um, wear gloves when you're doing this. The blade is sharp. Um, try to p always push it away from you. And once you get under the platform uh, with a good bite with the sharp edge, just turn the handle like that, and that will um, start to uh, lever up uh, the uh, the raft off the surface and um, so we'll just keep working it around here again we're keeping it pushing away from your body um, and uh, not towards you so that you not don't get cuts so here we just got it off our platform gonna take off the spit strip you can make sure that's all cleaned off and all platforms ready to go for another one here's a, a really important point you see here are these ridges that's the raft it should, you should be able to feel the ridges. They should be pronounced, but not too pronounced. They should be flattened out a little bit like toothpaste going onto a toothbrush. Um, and that's how it's going to hold onto the platform. If it's too close, then it's going to um, keep the uh, raft too tight onto our model and uh, make it so that we can't uh, remove it. Also, if, if that, and that's going to be your nozzle being too close. Anyways, there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed our video. Um, please, uh, if you have any questions, please contact us at uh, affinia.com. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon.